I have been going through this book with a fine tooth comb, trying to work out which strategies do and don't work for people with ADHD. And then I found it on page 105, the smoking gun as to why atomic habits doesn't work for ADHD brains. In this video, I'm gonna explain what that is, why it is, and give you some alternatives. A few years back, many moons ago, way before my ADHD diagnosis, I decided to download the audiobook and half listen to it of Atomic Habits. Now at the time, like many of you I know, those that have gone undiagnosed especially for so long, I was trying to find that magic answer as to why my willpower was so trash, why I just couldn't seem to build and sustain a good habit. I found some nuggets of wisdom in there, like stacking my habits together, but I couldn't understand why sometimes that worked really well and sometimes that just seemed to make everything so much harder. And although I found it super interesting and I learned a bunch of stuff, I felt really overwhelmed about how to implement it and then I just didn't really look at it again. And I see this pattern, this cycle with so many of the one-to-one -one coaching clients that I have and it hurts my heart, honestly. It hurts my heart and soul because I've been there and I get it and I see it happen. We try these strategies, they don't really work for us, but we jump to the conclusion, we jump to the assumption that we must be the problem. We just can't do the thing, we just can't implement the thing. And then we end up feeling just so deflated and bored at the prospect of trying to pick up some of these proven strategies again that we just don't bother. They don't feel good to us, but we feel like that's our only option, like that's what we have to do. But you don't, and here's why. Habits are a dopamine-driven feedback loop. Say it with me. Habits are a dopamine-driven feedback loop. That is the most important thing to take on board. Why? Because at the core of ADHD, one of the biggest contributors to ADHD symptoms is a dysfunction of our dopaminergic system. Our dopamine is dysregulated. This is super important because what it means is that any habit strategy that you are using is built around this idea that habits are a dopamine-driven feedback loop, but your feedback loop ain't doing what other people's feedback loops are doing. So taking a book like this at face value without trying to work out what does and doesn't work for you and feeling shame around the fact that it doesn't work, it's essentially like reading the operational manual for a machine which was written based on an assumption that doesn't even apply to that machine. Anyone telling you that habits are really important to help your ADHD isn't wrong. You know it, right? I know it. I know you know it. That's why we work so hard to try and do the habits. We know that the exercise, that the regular routines, that the eating at specific times or eating things that are good for our body, we know that that will not only help our ADHD symptoms, but just the general wellness and happiness of our lives. But if somebody tells you that without understanding inherently that the way that the ADHD brain functions makes habit building hard is missing the point entirely. I know that you don't need to be told that habits are important for ADHD. You know that. What you need is some grace and understanding as to why they are hard and some ways to work on them that work for your brain. Okay, so here's my view of what needs to happen instead. And this isn't me, <laughs> this isn't me shitting all over James Clear. There is stuff in this book that absolutely does apply to ADHD and, um, you know, things that we can take from it and bring into our lives. It's not all total trash. But the point that I am making is that so much is sold to us as just use this proven strategy, just use this magic bullet and you'll be able to hack life. For one, not true on any level. But for two, as an adhd -er, what really should be being said is, here's a bunch of stuff that may or may not work for your brain, and by the way, if you have ADHD, most of it probably won't, so what you should really do is speak to or get advice and support from somebody that understands the way that your brain works, and rather than just telling you this is what you should do, they should help you to understand in yourself what works and what doesn't work for you as the unique individual that you are. Here's what that looks like in practice. Number one, Getting okay with the reality that your ADHD brain will make habit building difficult for you and it will always require a degree of conscious effort. But with that, recognizing that if you have only been following neurotypical advice and reading books like Atomic Habits, there is so much more yet to be discovered to help you build habits the ADHD way. From the people that I've worked to so far one-to-one -one on this, this looks like defining what a habit actually is for you and why it matters, letting go of how you think habits should be and should look in your life, creating your own personal rule book for habits, and focusing on how you can bounce back when you inevitably fail or fall off that habit wagon. 
I'm talking about like rubber balling it, getting you in there like ba-boom, 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 bouncing back with those habits.